Strobe glasses like these are being used by some of the world's top athletes to improve their performance. We wanted to test them out for ourselves, so we pitted two of our physios who've had previous injuries against one another in a competition to see who could improve the most from training with them. I had a left ACL tear just over three years ago. Balance has not been great on that side, same with like jumping and landing and all the mechanics around that. So I've had some concussions in the past. I feel like I can balance really well with my eyes open. The second I close my eyes, I fall over. Welcome to Who's Line Is It Anyway? The show where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Prior to the competition, baseline measurements were done across three different tests. These were single leg balance with eyes closed, single leg hopping also with eyes closed, as well as using human benchmark reaction time testing. With eyes closed for single leg balance as well as single leg hopping, both competitors had to rely entirely on their vestibular and proprioceptive systems as a result of not having any visual input. We were using measurements of single leg balance timing as well as postural sway, and when looking at jumping, we were looking at biomechanics on takeoff and landing. So the box turns green, close anywhere as big as you can. Well, almost slow. Come on, I'm getting worse. I'm getting worse. <laughs> It's kind of right in that same window. 289, 290, 291. The earliest form of stroboscopic vision training was used by Michael Jordan during the peak of his success with the Chicago Bulls. The story goes that Jordan wanted to train with strobe lights in order to get used to the bright lights from camera flashes that he was being bombarded with at the free throw line. Beyond tolerating the photographer's flashes, he noticed this type of training was bettering his game in other ways, such as improvements in picking up on visual cues, faster reaction time, and feeling that the game around him was moving slower. Stroboscopic vision training would evolve from the early days using nightclub strobe lights to the eyewear prototypes that are now being seen as a training tool for modern athletes like Steph Curry and Kawhi Leonard, who use them to improve cognitive processing, reaction time, attention, anticipation, and hand-eye coordination. And he's got a tennis ball in his right hand and the basketball in his left. What is he seeing through those goggles? Well, right here, what you're seeing is, is the stro it's a strobing effect, so it's like shutters. <laughs> <laughs> we use strobe glasses for 20 minute sessions three times a week for four weeks while doing exercises to train balance, reaction time, jumping, landing, and strength. So I have it on the setting where the bottom is black and the top is flashing. I can't really see where I'm jumping unless I look way down. I should feel like I'm gonna miss it. Whoa. <laughs> I can't tell where the stuff is at all. <laughs> Each week, we aim to progress to a slower shutter speed and reduce the amount of visual input we were receiving and increase the difficulty of these exercises. In trying to control muscle output and help you navigate the world, your brain integrates three primary sensory systems. Vision, proprioception, and vestibular inputs. The vestibular system is in the inner ear and it generates the sensation of moving up and down and helps orient your eyes with your head's movements. The proprioceptive system is feedback from your body due to touch, acceleration, positioning, orientation, and more that gives us some sense of where your body is and how it's moving. In healthy individuals, sensory information comes from the receptors in the joint and is sent to the brain for further processing. The brain then integrates this information along with visual and vestibular inputs and uses that information to allow you to move appropriately according to your environment. After an injury to a joint, the sensory information from the injured area is disrupted, which can then affect the brain's ability to get a clear picture of where your body, and particularly the injured limb, are located in space. In order to compensate, the brain shifts its processing resources away from the proprioceptive system and towards more reliable inputs, such as vision, in a process called sensory reweighting. As a result, individuals will have more reliance on vision for postural control. 
The problem with this is that with a heavy reliance on vision, this may reduce the brain's capacity to process other information and as a result reduce motor efficiency and increase injury risk. By periodically blocking vision, the brain begins to upregulate signals from other areas of the body particularly the proprioceptive system. This type of training aims to shift the brain's strategies for body control movement tasks away from vision and back to the sensory signals from joint and ligament receptors. And it also forces the brain to be as efficient as possible with the visual information it's receiving, allowing us to essentially train the sensory system the same way you would train a muscle. After four weeks of training with the stroke glasses, the same baseline tests were repeated once again, looking at single leg balance with eyes closed, single leg hops with eyes closed, and reaction time testing. So do you think you did better before or after? Definitely felt it getting better throughout it, especially with a lot of the like taking off and changing direction stuff. Like I could definitely feel a lot slower on that left leg when I initially started it and then Within kind of like two weeks of it, it actually started to feel a fair bit better with a little bit of practice on it. I definitely feel like I did better after. Balancing eyes closed, I would be on my foot for a few seconds and then just completely lose balance and fall over. I'm yeah. able to control it more. Yeah, balance looked a lot better on your testing for sure. <laughs> so who do you think won? Let's start with uh, the balance. I think Katie won that one. I think I probably did. And then jumping? I feel like I might have won that one. This is your balance time? Mm -hmm. So 10 seconds and then six. And this was what you did oh, yeah. on the retest. <laughs> so you got the full 30 seconds and less sway. And actually, this is your jumping. This is the first one. First. Okay. It's your jump height, sir. Yeah. yeah. 12. 12. That was the retest. Yeah, like jump heights changed a lot. Like an inch higher? Basically, yeah. Because I felt like the left leg stuff was super different when I was doing it with the glasses. Like the first couple times I was struggling so much with that. Oh, that's cool. Your left is actually better than your right on that one. <laughs> Who do you think won reaction time? Oh, my reaction time was not good. I don't know. You both did worse. <laughs> <laughs> Oops.